Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Rome Total War Remastered. Here today on the channel, we're back with a brand new campaign series. We're going to be playing as the Eastern Roman Empire Remastered on the Barbarian Invasion DLC. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me a free early access code of Rome Remastered and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them, their community team. And of course, Feral Interactive. The Skippy Eye campaign has just wrapped up and I need to replace it with something. I haven't seen anyone play as the Eastern Roman Empire, so I thought why not play as them. Okay, so this time around, just to mix things up, we're going to be going with realistic unit colour scheme. We're going to go with zero um, campaign map vibrancy. We're going to be playing on ultra unit scale. And we're going to turn off unit variation uh, in the bottom right there. I had most of those turned on for the Skippy Eye campaign. And we'll turn off uh, projectile trails as well this time around. Which, these are the settings I was using in my Barbarian Invasion uh, Romano-British series. So, we've been playing very hard, very hard. And... The faction difficulty comparing to the Western Roman Empire is only hard compared to very hard, but it should be a lot of fun. I felt like this is going to lead on well from that Skippy Eye campaign, and yeah, let's get stuck into the Eastern Roman Empire campaign. Uh, modifiers wise, we're going to keep everything on remastered for now. I haven't, I don't even know, I've only been playing on the remaster, which seems fine. I don't actually know what sort of the strat and meta is. Like, what are other people doing? <laughs> I've just been enjoying, like, the full remaster. Maybe you can be a little bit meticulous and pick and choose and whatnot, but I haven't sort of found a, a comfortable medium. I've just been just going straight remaster uh, this time around. But there are a lot of other factions, and there's still a lot of other uh, series I'm open to do. Still haven't checked out the Alexander DLC, but I'm definitely interested in doing that at some point. Okay. Let's get stuck uh, onto the campaign map. So we start off with our capital here in Constantinople. And we have Greece, Asia Minor, and a couple of others. So here's the campaign vibrancy on 100. And this is it on zero. For you guys that are curious, you can even tell like the gamma really low off as well. Kind of reminds me of... Like stain the steel, I guess, back in the day. I put that gamma back up slightly. I slightly have the UI size a little bit larger for mobile users, but you can really, if you don't like the UI, really turn it quite far down. And a currency crisis at the moment. We have 7,000 in the bank and a lot to deal with in this campaign. One of the major issues you have to deal with in barbarian invasion playing as the romans is dealing with the finances and religion fortunately in the east we have a lot of decent wealthy territory so we've got a nice treasury at the moment and we're making a decent amount of cash uh, we currently have our faction leader here vol Innes flavius so to get our victory conditions, we need 34 settlements. We need to take Constantinople, Alexandria, Rome, and Carthage. We're currently at war with the Sassanids and the Samnites. So, them, the Ostrogoths, and the Visigoths. Just the Goths we have to deal with. In the, well, no, there's no Visigoths, is there? It's just the Goths and the Ostrogoths in this. Uh, we've got Sarmatians to the north. The Franks, the Vandals, and the Saxons, I don't think are going to be too much of a concern for us. But... We will have to watch out for the Huns. Um, Eastwood, there's only really the Sassanids. So maybe focusing on them early on, trying to secure our eastern border is probably the play and gobble up as much territory as we can. We might just have to sort of hold a defensive perimeter across the Danube to deal with the Huns and the Goths. So looking at our family members, we do have an abundance of them, which is fantastic. There is a clear divide in paganism and Catholicism. Now, 
there is a bit of a debate on what side you want to sort of go down. For the Eastern Roman Empire, I think it's easier to go um, Catholic. Some people actually, like, don't go fully one way or the other. I, I, I've seen people, and people in the comments have actually strategized that what you can do for your core territories, like your region capitals, let's say, you make them Catholic, and then you make the border territories um, pagan. It makes things a little bit easier. But I like to go fully one way just to make things easier because sometimes the faction leader can have a lot of Catholic traits like worldwide. So what we need to do is we need to go down and go to every single city, either break down the pagan building and build a chapel and also if there's any uh, pagan generals inside we're gonna have to move them out and put catholic ones in so that's probably the major threat because we're probably going to be able to hold on to all of our territory the western roman empire are going to be attacked from all sides and they're going to be dealing with invaders and also their problems they're they're actually easier going pagan i think there's more territories within their empire. So we also might want to up our taxes slightly where we can as well. So in Constantinople, there's a chapel, which is fine. We can get uh, various other bonuses and stuff. Recruitment-wise as well, to garrison our settlements, we're better off actually building our lighter infantry than peasants to keep the public order because from what they've changed in the well this was even a Rome 1 thing so you would usually put peasants in your cities to quell public order but they've actually been their effective public order rate has been halved in barbarian invasion which is interesting so here in Serium uh, it's a good example as it's currently 50 50 between paganism and Catholicism. So we're going to break down the temple of Mithras and build a chapel in there instead. How it works is I think depending on the governor as well, I think the settlement preferences them. So for example here, Julianus Flavius is in Thessalonica. He's going to continue to spread paganism if he's left inside. So we want to try and get this public order in check. We'll t bring down the Temple of Sol Invictus and we'll go ahead and build a Christian shrine in its place. Once we get our public order up and under control, we can tax our populace more and we can continue to expand and, and conquer and retake some of the Roman territory because the last thing we want as we continue to expand further out is to deal with rebellions within uh, then within okay so I have gone around all my territories to convert them to Christianity and I've also moved out all of the pagan generals unfortunately a lot of our pagan generals are some of our best commanders which is going to be an issue early on. Okay, so public order-wise, everything's back on track. Rebellions can compound on this difficulty. So what we're going to do is we're going to build up a decent border force here across the Danube. We might even go north if we need to to defeat the Goths. But we'll just have to see. The Huns will have a fair few armies at their disposal on this difficulty. So we're going to have to watch out for them. Um, so you're to the north here. I guess we could move you back to Constantinople just to rally up. Family tree-wise as well, it's quite massive. I'm not going to go down with male preference primogenitor. I think we'll go down. We'll sort by uh, Catholics. I don't want a pagan to be my faction leader or heir, so we'll sort by that and then command, which we ended up doing in our Scipio campaign, which went to service quite well. Because from what I can remember, in a city, for example, so let's take Athens, for example, there is no general inside, there is no religious building, 
So what happens to the religion? Um, from what I can from what I can remember, there is a slow growth religiously, depending on the faction leader. So you are better off making the faction leader Catholic rather than pagan. So from what I from what I can remember in the original game, I could be mistaken that. For that example, in Athens, if our faction leader was pagan, uh, paganism would slowly grow up uh, in Athens and across the empire. So, I think early on in this campaign, we've got a couple of options. Now that we've sort of started to make progress religiously, we want to build as many watchtowers around the empire to stop uh, rebel spawning, because... The more line of sight you have, that stops them spawning. But we need to sort of make preparations for the hordes of the Huns and the Goths. Maybe even the Sarmatians to the north. So, we're basically going to have to control two fronts. Holding the Danube, I think, is probably the play. And eastward, it's kind of interesting because there are a fair few rebel territories. Eastward, Petra maybe in a couple of others so what I want to do is split my entire army capacity between the west and the east I think getting some armies to deal with the Sassanids is a good idea because we've got a lot of territory over here Antioch um, what else we got Tar uh, Tarsus because if we can get rid of the Sassanids that will allow us to eventually go against our enemy the Western Roman Empire. They will probably betray me eventually, especially on this difficulty, but the later I can leave that, probably the better. I think beating the Huns and the Goths into submission is probably not a bad idea. Uh, there is a way to not let horde factions continually spawn, which is something I'm probably going to do. But you never know with the Huns. Sometimes they target the Eastern Roman Empire. Sometimes they focus on Sarmatians and Goths. Sometimes they deal with... They push up against the Saxons and the Franks. While others... Sometimes they just like focus on the Western Roman Empire. It's going to be a little bit of RNG, I think. So, we'll, we'll try and get an army down near Jerusalem as well. Petra is the closest rebel territory that we could go for. So, it's probably not a bad idea getting an army down here near uh, Philadelphia. I think that's how you say that. And Sidon as well. We'll get an army down in the Levant and we'll probably send them there. Alexandria seems to be fine as well. So, usually in the first episode, there is a little bit of micromanaging. Just trying to set everything up. Because when we start pushing against the Sassanids and the Goths, which will be inevitable, we don't want to have to be dealing with constant rebellions and uprisings and issues in our territory. Because it's quite large, quite a wealthy territory. We're in a really good position for now, though. Okay, so let's have a look at our agents. So we do have a spy down here. Let's move him down to Petra. There shouldn't be too much of an army to concern. We've got a diplomat here as well. Having you so far south there is probably not the play. Pushing towards the Sassanids might be a good idea. We have an assassin here as well. We could try and level you up by going after this merchant. Potentially. Um, 32%. Or 30% in there. Right, let's move you over here. Moving to position. It's actually a diplomat, not a merchant. We'll see if you can get that done. Okay, we have a, another diplomatic Constantinople. Um, where to move you? Well, we can. Are you actually closer to the Sassanids? So we are currently at war with them. They're not interested in a ceasefire. And I guess I can push you further north as well. Okay, navy-wise, we've got a huge navy. And I don't know if we necessarily need it. Because 172, we, we probably need more military forces, to be honest. 
We need a navy to control the crossing here at the Bosporus. But apart from that, maybe fairing forces. I think as long as we've got a decent presence holding here, holding this choke point, connecting our empire, we probably don't need to spend 300. Look at that. Look at that. The 300 gold. Yeah, let's get rid of those, because that's going to be a huge expense. This is probably going to fund half a stack if we just disband those. We want to do keep... We want to still keep a decent fleet. Like, three's plenty. Because, uh, like, we can we can continue to ferry troops back from Crete and, and Greece and move them further up. Like, do we even need an army down here? I don't think so. And that's going to save us a lot of gold. We might keep... A couple to deal with um, naval blockades, which we can move out if we need to. But three is plenty, I reckon. Unfortunately, there's no land bridges, so we, <laughs> in other games, we might have got away with no ships. So minus four hundred still. We're still hemorrhaging a little bit of cash. Once our public order goes up a bit higher, we might be able to tax the populace a bit more. Okay. Public order-wise, still seems to look a lot better. And in some regions, we can even put them up to very high taxes. Populations aren't going to be an issue. Because we don't have to go for, like... Marian reforms, essentially, like in the vanilla campaign. So making a slight profit now. Okay. Our faction leader is a little bit old. He's not the best commander as well. But let's end the turn and continue. Uh, missed target. Okay, that didn't work out. He's been married off, which is fine. And we're slowly but surely building those Christian shrines up and getting more in our army. Okay, so the Goths have taken that territory there. We have had some rebel spawn, which is annoying, but we had to deal with that. We have units slowly but surely moving across the empire and uh, rallying up. Okay. Probably could go for a legionary barracks. Yeah. We're sending some of my <laughs> pagan generals to build watchtowers around the empire. But so far, everything seems to be quite quiet in the East. The Eastern Roman Empire excels in heavy cavalry. So we want to try and get as much as them as we can. We've got a small army rallying up in Antioch. And we probably could strike Petra here with Vibius. There's only three units inside. Uh, four infantry, two archers, no star command. Look, you know what? Let's fight this one. I want to show you guys the Eastern Roman Empire units, even although this isn't the most difficult battle. So, let's fight this one here today against the Petra Rebels. Over there, the rebel slaves stand to threaten us all. Should they win, at best we will all die beneath their cruel whips. It turns my stomach just to gaze upon them. Now, set your minds on the task to come. Strike hard. Strike without mercy. Okay, let's get stuck into the battle. And I want to show you guys off the units. So, this isn't... The most overly of difficult settlements to take. And there's not much of a garrison inside either. Four ways of attack. We'll divide our army up as equally as we can. And what we'll do is trying to allow our archers 
to take most of the initiative in this fight. So, we'll split things up. So I think grabbing one unit of Limitani and one unit of Cometatenses. I always struggle to say that word. So let's just move them there. And what I do want to show off the Imperial General's bodyguard as well. So we'll just put him uh, just there. Okay. Okay, stats wise, the Limitani have the more defensive stats because historically they were the ones garrisoning the forts and border territories in Rome. Here are the Imperial Household Bodyguards. This is the bodyguard for the Eastern Roman Empire and the Rome Remaster. Looks nice. I like the look of the helm. We do want to try and get as much Eastern Roman Empire cavalry as we can. Stock standard armoured archers. And here we have the Cometa Tenses who do have more aggressive stats or the Limitani are more defending the Cometa Tenses have more aggressive stats than defensive which is kinda cool historically from what I can remember the reorganization of the armies was needed due to the various pl plagues and, and civil wars going on prior to this campaign so a restructure of the army was needed so you do have to be a little bit precautious early on because in Rome Remaster in the vanilla version of the game playing as Roman you want to forge the Roman Empire and a lot of your units reflect that being aggressive and needing to expand and conquer while in Barbarian Invasion there are going to be specific places on the map which you're going to have to hold and defend more than more or less um, than conquer territory because I think Eastwood now dividing up our armies into two fronts is probably the play oh no they're going to push out there no, move back okay they've been drawn out because I think what we'll do is we'll try and focus all of our eastern manpower towards destroying the Sassanids. Because there's no Armenians in this campaign. There's very few threats that are probably going to come over the Caucasus. So, gobbling up as much territory eastward, getting rid of the Sassanids, will secure our eastern flank. Then we'll be able to push against the Western Roman Empire. We might even be able to send these forces like to North Africa because we do need to take Carthage. The main objective of this series is to complete my victory conditions. I want to reforge the Roman Empire and eventually destroy the West. For some reason, their general units are sitting really far out there. Come on, it'd only take a couple of decent peel for you guys to hit him. My archers are hitting their horse archers. We will try again a couple of those horse archer auxiliaries in the future. As the Roman army in this time period did use them quite a lot, along with barbarian mercenaries. They did surprisingly use a decent amount of ballista units. There goes the enemy general down there. And they did occasionally use a crossbow unit. Although... Not that often, because they were quite expensive. Okay, so let's move my archers up. We'll just try and skirmish out the inhabitants that are sitting in the center. Oh no, they seem to be wanting to charge out. We might better get a couple of volleys off before we need to push back. Okay, they're going forward. So just jockeying back and forth. This is probably the play. Just need to be careful. Okay, they've still got a couple of horse archers. I was wondering what was hitting us there. Oh, they've been caught 
out there. I gave the order to retreat and rather than go straight back directly, they expanded <laughs> sort of the width of the, the the road in rather than just running straight back, which is annoying. It's a little bit back and forth. It's just a shame they're not in range. Them moving back and forth is actually good for us because we are starting to hit them from behind. Like we could move our infantry further up, but then they'd be engaging them. Hitting them from the sides and the rear is going to make our limited ammunition I put to work better. A clear victory, I just want to try and save as much Roman lives as we can. Oh, they're really... no. Just back and forth. I was going to say, I thought they were going to really full send it there, but they didn't. So we had to build Petra up. It's just that one horse unit that's annoying. And then... Once the east is secure, we'll be able to fully go against the Western Roman Empire. So yeah, it's basically just RNG. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's basically just RNG whether or not and when the Western Roman Empire declares war. Sometimes it can be quite early in a campaign. Sometimes it can be quite late or not at all. It just sort of depends on how heavily they get pressurized. The AI tends to go pagan, so for the West they do last a little bit longer, but they've got a lot of problems to deal with. We'll form up here and we'll charge against these units in the town square. They've got to deal with the, the Celts, the Romano-British, and the warring Franks and Saxon kingdoms. In this campaign, we should be alright settlement-wise. We probably won't need to abandon any of ours. Sometimes it is a little bit advantageous to abandon territories in Iberia and such. A bit of a tip for the Western Roman Empire campaign. If you are dealing with constant rebellions and you know there's an absolute chance that a rebellion is going to occur... You are actually better off to disband the military buildings in the settlement. It stops the AI spawning top high quality tier um, Western Roman rebels in that. We probably will have to deal with our own Eastern Roman rebels at some point. But hopefully, not for too long. Well, Petra's now fallen. That's a good start. 24 population in there out of 400. Okay. Quite small. At least it's Catholic. I guess... It's... Yeah, bleeding over there from Jerusalem. Keep the taxes on low for now. We need to move everyone in and just hold. Okay. They're going to be fine in Petra for now. We'll build a Christian shrine and a wall as well. We do have some rebels about the army, which we about our armies which we need to deal with. We do have Theodosius Flavius here. He's going to move to Hatra, and I was going to move out an army, that, some units there, but it looks like the assassins could intercept us here. We have our faction leader in Constantinople. That's only rebelling because it's on very high. We'll send you north as we're probably just going to have to auto-resolve a lot of these rebels. Because they're probably just not worth playing, but we do need to get rid of them before they continue to grow. We'll move you guys further back. Yeah, so we do border quite close to the Western Roman Empire. We only border with them here in the north. 
drop uh, there. No, we might have to move some units back into that, which is annoying. Because we probably want to push against the Goths before they build up too much of a home territory in Transylvania in the former Dacian lands. Just throw back those rebels outside. Serenium. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. Let's push into Hatra now. Theodosius Flavius, my grandson, and numerous Flavius. Three units of archers, a lot of Limitani and Comitatenses. We've even got some archers as well. My assassin hasn't been overly successful so far, so we'll send him in and hopefully he can get some stuff done. Mission successful there. Okay, let's siege things out, and hopefully we have our first siege and fight against the Sassanids. Um, we're dealing with a little bit of rebellion down in Petra, but that's fine. We've got another army moving north, and we'll send that to deal with the Goths. But there already seems to be a lot of watchtowers pre-built there, which is good. Okay, I think it's time to attack the Sassanids. Five siege equipment has been constructed. Not the biggest army inside, but our first opportunity to fight the Sassanids. We'll play this one with Theodosius, three-star command, our future faction leader. Let's take Hatra from the south. They stand alone! No friend has come to this place to die for them. Does this not say something about their honor? They're standing among nations? The city's people look to us to save them. If we are to keep them from... ...then we must hold firm. There can be no quarter, no weakness. If needs be, this is where we die. But it will not come to that. We shall fight like true warriors and prevail. They have been lulled into a false sense of security by a few feet of defensive wall, as if that will protect them. The count of our warriors will show you who is truly favored by the gods. It is not our foes. These people have yet to taste victory at my expense. Today will be no different, so lay into them with a will. The gods have surely smiled upon us. The omens are so numerous and so in our favor that I cannot describe them all and still have time for a battle today. We go now to our bloody business! Okay, let's get to business. <laughs> let's uh, start the deployment. Okay, so we do have some enemy reinforcements coming in, which we do have to remember and keep an eye on. My archers, my horse archers, should be able to deal with them quite competently. Let's move our better quality units onto the rams. There we go. Move you about here. We'll try and surround the city as best we can. And try and skirmish as many of them out before we enter. But I think that's probably the best formation. Send you there. Send you to like, I don't know, here so. Okay, uh, these guys will try and probably chuck one here. I wish the zone was a little bit better because this side's huge. Look at this, where we can deploy from. I think moving you here because there's a a clean straight pathway there. Uh, let's chuck you here. Let's say. Okay, archers. We need to deal with those reinforcements. So we'll chuck you over here because that seems to be the furthest reinforcing point. They could go over to our far right, but, oh, not fortunately they haven't. They've gone further to the north. Well, let's have a look at the units. Two units of battering rams ready to push up where we can. The Sassanids are quite a decent threat in this campaign. They have a lot of territories far east. This should be a good fight and challenge for us. They have a lot of... They, they really excel in, in cavalry compared to us over than infantry. But from what I can remember, I feel like I've had a harder time in Total War Attila with the Western and Eastern Roman Empire campaign. The Sassanids uh, 
definitely a faction to be cautious of in Total War Attila. <laughs> Thankfully, in this game, they don't have a, a crazy abundance of puppets. Okay, so let's move my generals up. I don't know if we're going to sort of chuck them in. Because I don't want to risk them. But we'll see how we go. There's no point of them sitting back with the main army. We might be able to use them, we'll just have to see. Okay, archers. Move you guys up to try and hit some of the Sassanid units inside my horse archers. If we're quick enough, we might get, get some shots off. Hang on, if we can move them... Hmm. Theodosius, our faction heir now. Don't want to risk him. But we could risk our other. Seems like that infantry is trying to posture. Maybe they're going to sacrifice one unit to save the other two, potentially. So what we'll do is move my Imperial Bodyguard just to block the units in from going from the gateway. And try and get my Horse Archers to target theirs. We don't need to move the Battering Rams just up yet. Because time is on our side. try and skirmish as many of these reinforcements coming in, the more we can avoid their reinforcements getting them into the, like getting into the town square is going to make it easier for our infantry. Just moving my Imperial bodyguard around seems to be distracting them a bit. We might be able to charge a unit. Go with a hammer and anvil strike, maybe. We'll just see. Yeah, that could be enough, because this unit is pretty... Oh, uh, no, we can't do that. Because they look like they're about to combine there. Seems to be... Opening their back well. Oh, hang on, you're getting caught there. That little speed boost. How the hell did you catch cavalry? That's kind of insane. And maybe they're winded? I don't know. Bringing up this cavalry has so far been a good idea because they're just sort of ignoring my horse archers, which are peppering them quite hard. Okay, so they're not really shooting anyone over here now. And if anything, they've moved their infantry further back. Oh, they're like flush to the, the city wall there. Okay. Move here, you might be able to get some shots. I'm trying to micro this cavalry. It's a little bit annoying because <laughs> I'm actually quite surprised. How quick these infantry are closing the distance here. They are very much on the octane. Yeah, so they really just want to go for my generals. They really want they want to get into the town square. That's fine by me. <laughs> just have to micro it. That's the only thing. My horse archers have used half their ammunition. They're definitely firing. Yeah, they are. It's just a little bit hard to see. Because I don't have unit projectiles turned on. But as you can see, we have littered a fair few across the battlefield. Ooh, nearly got caught there. We've nearly destroyed one entire unit, which is really good. A little bit further back. There are a couple of stragglers left in that unit, but that's okay. They can make their way back to the town square. We'll try and hit them from all angles here. The enemy general's routing. They're nearly gone as well. He's now gone. Perfect. 
That's one of the generals dead. Taking a little bit longer than what I anticipated, but the plan over here dealing with the reinforcements is working. 35 minutes remaining of a potential battle is plenty. We can probably zoom in and have a look of actually what's going on. When we litter them with arrows. Not being able to six with the micro them so hard. <laughs> what sort of goofy looking run is that? <laughs> Alright. Poor Sassanids. Against us Chad Romans. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Alright. We should be able to comfortably run down those spearmen now. From the ear with our from the rear with our Imperial bodyguard. There even seems to be like this huge mound in front of the gate there. How unfortunate. Well, we've destroyed units there quite easily. Right, it's time to send our guys in. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I didn't even. What, what do we use? Two percent of our available ammunition for the archers against the units inside. They really got the memo that they were going to get. <laughs> shot from these units on the outside. So we'll move up our battering rams and try and make our way in with our infantry. Our soldiers have reached the gates with the battering ram. So the Sassanids by the look of it is trying to hold back in the town square with their infantry. Here is their general's bodyguard. Definitely we have to watch out for. Essentially there Cataphractor units. Cataphractari. I can't I don't actually know the exact name of those, but you know what I mean when I say cataphracts, cataphractari. Essentially just very heavy. Armoured Eastern units. We do have access to those as well. Okay. The archers probably can hit this unit here if they want to get their stuff together. Pathfinding is just splitting them a bit. Okay, so let's try and move our units in. The more the better. They do have their peeler that they can use. We also want to try and use our archers as well. The quicker we can take Hatra and these border Sassanid territories, the quicker the better. Oh, hang on, how... why have they... They've somehow bamboozled that unit and probably going to get the flank around them. Move you here. The majority... and... sort of their... The majority of their better quality and wealthy settlements are, act are actually further eastward, so... There will be reinforcements coming... to protect their border territories. It's only a matter of time. The quicker we can take... Their frontier pro provinces, the better. Now, the problem we have to deal with is paganism, because it's all grouped in together, I, I think. For the Sassanids. Okay, let's form you up here. We don't need to go too headstrong into the town square. We can just sort of form up and take our time. 27 minutes. Still got plenty of time as well. I do want to try and use my arches as best we can, but we'll see how we go. Move you further up here. Uh, okay. You guys are already in here and have already made it. Try and get my arches to hit there cavalry, because that's going to be the major problem of this fight. My horse archers are now out of ammunition, which is fine. We'll try and get our general's bodyguard in. Just in case they do charge us, we might have a problem, because we don't have generals nearby. We'll just have to see how we go. Maybe pushing more to our right side might be better, because there's another... There's four pathways in, and we only occupy three. We are starting to slightly skirmish. I'll oh, be ripping that spear infantry to shreds. 
That general's bodyguard is the thing I fear. So, oh, it looks like they're already. Oh, it was a bluff charge, potentially. Okay. Yeah, you're making the right rotation. It's just taking a little while. My archers. Oh, they're gonna try and drag us. Yeah, we could maybe get more guys in, like. Hang on. Because I want to use my archers as best we can. Why can't that drag in there? Like, that will do, I guess. Yeah, move the archers back. Oh. My god. So annoying. I'm going to have to send them in now. I wanted to slowly move up my infantry. And allow my archers to hit them, but they just got caught, and we've lost two units there from just one spear charge because they got caught in movement transition there. Far out, that's annoying. Look at that, they just got decimated with one charge. Alright, I'm gonna have to move you in. I don't know why that charge was so venomous. Look at that. I guess, just because our generals aren't here, I guess. Oh my god. Those two units are just crushing us. My god. Right, just try and surround that unit and destroy it. Drop a rally, you're here now. Yeah, I think there was a couple things. Uneven ground, potentially. Caught moving. Now, these guys are going to fight to the death because they're in the town square. But I feel like we've got enough melee attack with the Comet Atenses to destroy them. Thankfully, that General's Bodyguard seems to be sitting further back and is a little bit more docile. If they... If they Oh, we captured the town square, then maybe they might react to come back, then they will. So probably just try and charge that. You might be able to get a volley off. Okay. We might need to cycle charge this. Get all my infantry. To pin down that cavalry unit, and we'll get the generals to swing around here. Far out. I know we're dealing with a tier one army, but crikey. Two units took on quite a lot there. I might have underestimated the Sassanids a bit. It's okay because we surrounded them now. We should be able to win. We will need to risk our generals against theirs, but it's okay. We've got the RNG. Wow, 1.3k. <sighs> After doing so well early on, I didn't think the battle would have been that high casualty. Far out. In war, we must be speedy. Yeah, maybe if we're a little bit quicker in our reaction times, we could have done better. Carthage elephants getting taken out there. I believe I'm playing on the most up-to-date version, because they've updated a lot of the the wallpapers and, and such. Okay, now, Hatra is ours. We're going to have to wait here for a little while to replenish and repair. And That's fine. We'll exterminate the populace. There's only 2,000 inside. We'll retrain our Limitani and Comitatenses. Repair that as well. We'll build a shrine. Okay. Uh, it's only 400, so it's quite cheap. Still slowly but surely mobilizing against the Goths. We might be able to declare war upon them here today. We'll just have to see. The Vandals are to the north of us as well. Yeah, so they're starting to recruit some units, which is 
not good. But yeah, we're mobilizing to the north. We might need to push over the Danube. In the east, uh, Hatcher is fine. Still need to deal with the public order issues. Still building a lot of ports in my territories and trade and, and roads. Um, ports seem to be the best way to still make money in the game. But we're in a really good uh, place in the campaign for now. Okay, I've skipped a little bit ahead as we're preparing to go to war with the Goths. Luca Flavius, one star command, and our faction leader here as well. We want to move into their territory as best we can. Now, the Goths start off as a horde faction now that they've taken territory. What is different in Barbarian Invasion is if you destroy a horde faction, take all their territories, they tend to spawn especially on very hard, very hard, they tend to spawn like two, three armies that are probably better than what we got, so we might have to use the cheese to stop them spawning, but this is a lot of Huns, this is sort of made me a bit gobsmacked here. How many Hunnic forces are there? Five or six? Far out. Okay, so that's annoying. We might have to make, make like a fort wall up near Constantinople. We're pushing into, what is this, Baghdad, I guess? Yeah. We might be able to take that here today. Oh, hang on. The faction leader there for the Sassanids is there. Uh, Petra's now fine as well. And I'm assuming there's like a rebel territory. Maybe an Assassinid territory there. More units are being ferried up from Greece and Constantinople. As quick as we can. And we'll get Theodosius Flavius, my faction here. So what's this? This is just another army there. The faction leader. I think I might play this one actually. Because if we can get rid of him, that put us in a really good position. Okay, let's fight this one on the battlefield. So, we're not going to be able to probably have a battle against the Goths here today. I might start off episode 2 uh, coming out soon against the Goths. So, we'll deal with this army against the Sassanids. Okay, so let's just move up my horse archers. Some of my archers are a little bit weak in there because of that siege in Hatra, but that's fine. Move you here. Just make a strong, long infantry front line. Horse archers there, will be fine. Okay, sweet. Okay, so. We've got some reinforcements deploying. Here are the Imperial Bodyguard once again. With a. <laughs> A sandy background, and then more Limitani and Comatatenses. Still using the realistic color scheme I've been using for all my campaigns. Because I enjoy it the most. Right, let's move my infantry to try and match those reinforcements coming in, my archers as well. We'll move up my horse archers to try and snipe their faction leader. The more faction leaders we can get rid of, the better. Particularly if they're sitting outside a settlement. They can be really annoying to destroy. Because faction leaders usually have the biggest infantry. What infantry? Cavalry, like numerical cavalry units. And they are very, very tough to break down in cities. If you can use them properly, they are nearly invincible. For the human player, speaking of invincible, good TV show on Amazon Prime. Been watching that recently. Along with the boys. I do recommend it. If you're sick of Marvel and just sort of DC comics, want something different, watch Invincible <laughs> or The Boys. <laughs> so much better. Okay. You're gonna get caught there. Looks like their reinforcements are trying to defend their general. Yeah, they've been a little bit caught there. Our infantry is taking a little bit of time to get here. They are pushing up high ground. But if we can wrap around in circle, we'll be laughing. Try and move you there. Yeah, they're just trying to 
protect him, I guess. Try and shepherd him out. Yeah, try and swing around. There we go. Okay, move my generals up. They should be a bit closer. They're a little bit too far behind. They're withdrawing slightly further back. But you never know with the arrow. Sometimes it can turn into a full retreat. Which you could very well do. Yeah, give chase, because I think they might be I think they might be trying to dip. <laughs> They're bailing out of the battle, I think. Yeah, far out. We had a golden opportunity to get the and it, the faction leader. Oh, oh, is that how close it was? Oh, that's deceiving. I thought there was heaps of room back there. No, that we were basically fighting them on the border. Oh my god. Yeah, they're gone. You can sometimes move your archers up to the border and they can still shoot over it. That's a little bit cheeky. Oh, fire out. Oh well. We had a real opportunity there. I guess we should have just full centered on them. A tactical withdrawal. That's so annoying. Yeah, sometimes you can form up here. If they're in range, they can get their shots off. That's just more or less unfortunate, to be honest. And now he's done exactly what we tried to avoid that entire battle with the faction leader fleeing into the city. Oh well, that's just unlucky. Hey, that's total war. You win some, you lose some, you draw some, and sometimes they just withdraw and run away with their tail between their legs, I guess. So, unfortunately, guys, it's time to wrap up this video here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've had a blast here today. It was a little bit micromanage, sort of heavy. We've got we because we start off with such a large empire, and as we're playing on like a harder difficulty, you have to be really quite meticulous in your approach. Like in the Scipio campaign, look what do you deal with Capua, Masana, like two three territories from the get go, and you can't really make a mistake. But trying to make sure our religious and economical buildings are on point while being aggressive early on focusing against the Sassanids and preparing to go to war with the Goths um, did take a little bit while so I feel like we're in a really good spot at the moment in the campaign so in the next couple of episodes I want to continue with my eastern border Theodosius Flavius the grandson of Val He's going to be dealing with the sort of Eastern campaign. Once we've dealt with the Sassanids, we can probably bring all over his manpower and military forces westward once we go against the Western Roman Empire. We have burnt through a couple turns in today's episode, and we haven't lost our alliance with the Western Roman Empire, which is a really quite decent situation. We do have to deal with the Goths before they become too much of a threat. Um, so we'll try and deal with them in episode 2 coming out soon. We've also got to watch out for the Huns as well because they, from what we can see there, they have like 4 or 5 stacks. I wouldn't be surprised if they have a lot more. Um, they tend to, I think I've seen in some campaigns, they spawn up to like 10 and 8 full stacks, which is kind of crazy. But I think it sort of depends on the difficulty. I think if you play on like normal or easy, it's only a couple. I, I, I think. But yeah, haven't seen uh, any threats from the Roxolani, the Vandals, or the Sarmatians either, which is really good. And we haven't lost any of our territories yet to Eastern Roman rebels. So we're going to continue our wars with the Sassanids, and we might even start off our war against the Goths in episode 2. But let me know in the comments, feedback, and suggestions. We allow me to expand and conquer. I can't wait to see how the Western Roman Empire goes because if we can sort of take the Sassanids and the Goths and maybe some of the other territories like will will the Western Roman Empire still be holding on or will they be sort of gobbled up by by barbarians because that can sometimes happen as well sometimes they can fall quite quickly to the Romano British the Celts and, and various Frankish and Saxon interests but yeah stay tuned for more videos on the channel uh, this is going to be the main campaign uh, for the next co coming weeks and days and months. And we might go back to the Macedon and Romano-British series. I haven't forgot about them. Um, but yeah, they're definitely probably in the pipeline and more Rome remastered content. 
Alright, cheers guys. I'm going to play the outro now. Unfortunately guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already with the bell notification on. Let me know in the comment section down below feedback and suggestions for the video. And feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to support the channel and follow me on my social media links, they are all linked in the description below. We've got the series playlist that you can access. You can also have a look at my gaming and recording equipment. If you want to get yourself some cheap games, check out the links. You can support me on Patreon if you want. Channel members are available. Use creator code SimpsyTotalWar on the Epic Games Store checkout uh, to flick me a couple of bucks. We've got Twitter, Discord, merchandise, Facebook, Steam Group, Instagram, Twitch, and Google Plus links all in the description below as well. But above all, guys, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simpsy. Much love from Australia. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>